We'll come to an example on free undamped motion. A mass of two kilograms is on a spring with spring constant k newtons per meter with no damping. Suppose the system is at rest and at time t equals zero the mass is kicked and starts traveling at two meters per second. How large does k have to be so that the mass does not go further than three meters from the rest position? Let's first record the given information. We know the mass m is two kilograms, k is a spring constant, because the system begins at rest, x of zero equals zero, and because at time zero the mass is kicked and travels two meters per second, the initial velocity is two meters per second, indicated by x prime of zero equals two. Because we have free undamped motion, we can model the system using the differential equation mx double prime plus kx equals zero, which is a second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. In our case, the differential equation is two x double prime plus kx equals zero. Dividing through by two, we have x double prime plus k divided by two times x equals zero. We can solve the differential equation using a characteristic equation, which is r squared plus k divided by two equals zero. Solving for r, we have r equals plus or minus i times the square root of k divided by two. Notice we have two complex solutions, and therefore the general solution is in the form of x of t equals a times cosine of omega t plus b times sine of omega t, which we can also express as c cosine of the quantity omega t minus gamma. Recall when we solved these types of equations before and we had complex solutions, we used the form of alpha plus or minus beta i, which in this case, alpha is zero and beta is the square root of k divided by two, and beta is the same as omega. This indicates the general solution is x of t equals a cosine of the square root of k divided by two t plus b sine of the square root of k divided by two t, which we can also express as c times cosine of the quantity the square root of k divided by two t minus gamma. When solving an initial value problem though, it's almost always better to use the general solution as a sum of cosine and sine, which we will do. And now we need to work on determining a and b using the initial conditions. Using x of zero equals zero, we substitute zero for t and then set the equation equal to zero. If we substitute zero for t, we have a cosine zero, which is one, plus b sine zero, and since sine zero is zero, we have the equation a times one equals zero, and therefore a equals zero. So if a equals zero, the cosine term simplifies out, and we're left with x of t equals b times sine of the square root of k divided by two t. And now from here, let's go back and look at the problem. We're looking for how large k has to be so that the mass does not go further than three meters from the rest position. Well, let's assume the mass goes exactly three meters from the rest position, then the amplitude of the sine function would have to be three. This indicates b can be either positive three or negative three. So again, because we're assuming the spring elongation or compression is exactly three meters, b must be plus or minus three. We're not told what direction the mass is kicked. If the mass was kicked toward the wall, we would use b equals negative three. If the mass was kicked away from the wall, we would use b equals positive three. I'm gonna go ahead and use b equals negative three, but it doesn't really matter. And now let's go to the next slide. And now we'll use the second initial condition, x prime of zero equals two, to determine the value of k. First we find the derivative, x prime of t is equal to negative three cosine of the square root of k divided by two t times the square root of k divided by two using the chain rule. And now we substitute zero for t and set the equation equal to two. Subbing in zero for t, we have negative three times cosine zero, which is one, times the square root of k divided by two equals two. Or just negative three times the square root of k divided by two equals two. And now we solve for k. We first divide both sides by negative three, and then we square both sides of the equation to get k divided by two equals four ninths, and therefore k equals eight ninths. So if the spring constant is eight ninths, the mass will travel exactly three meters from the rest position. If the spring is more stiff, or if the spring constant is greater than eight ninths, then the mass will travel less than three meters from the rest position. Which means in summary, if the spring constant k is greater than or equal to eight ninths, the mass will not go further than three meters from the rest position. Before we go, let's look at this graphically. If we substitute eight ninths for k into x of t, the square root simplifies to two thirds 
giving us x of t equals negative 3 sine of 2 thirds t, which is graphed here on the right. Notice how the graph does verify when the spring constant is 8 ninths, the mass will travel exactly 3 meters from the rest position. It first travels toward the wall and then travels away from the wall. And if the spring constant is greater than 8 ninths, the mass would travel less than 3 meters from the rest position. I hope you found this helpful.